Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Enigmatica 6. How are you guys doing today? How's life? We need to start today's episode by doing a little bit of adventuring because I have no leather, I have no wool, I have no string, I have no sugar cane. I just have beautiful eyes. That's it. And don't tell anyone, they're not that useful in game. Oh and by the way, before I forget, I have made myself a sleeping bag. So we can sleep whenever it's night time and we don't have to change our spawn. And yes, of course it's purple. We have already found our sugar cane. That's a good start. And this is avocado. Do you drop saplings or no? No. Oh yes, you do. Because we have a mod, sushis go crafting. And we can make sushis. In real life, I do hate fish, but I love sushi. I have been traveling for ages and I only found one pack of cows. I'm not gonna kill them for leather because I'm afraid that they are going to be the only cows in this world. Be in an area with enough aura to cause positive imbalance effects. Uh-huh. Okay, is that a castle? Really? I should have lived here. And there's also a waystone. I thought they only spawn in villages, but apparently you just get random ones. It's actually really good because we can come home, dump everything and go explore the castle. Oh, my inventory is full. Ew, it is an actual castle. And it's massive. We have a door, we have a horse, we have food. Probably the food is for the horse, but you know. There is nothing of interest in the barrels. There are a few items of interest inside the chest. Oh, name tags. Uh, we take them. I'm really beginning to like this castle. They even have a double bed. It's okay, there is nothing of interest inside the castle itself, so I'm just going to gather some clay, some sand, and some gravel so that we can start working on a tinker smeltery. Uh, the recipe for grout has not changed, right? It's sand, gravel, and clay. Okay. Good. I think I'm basically done with the exploration. I got a few goodies on me. I did manage to find the village over there, which we're going to use in order to teleport back home. We also have a roguelike dungeon and a very weird looking tower. At first I thought it does not have a door. It did, but it's okay. <laughs> this is cramped. Which mod does this? Do you see that chest? You thought I was going to open it, right? No, of course not. I do watch Dr. Rage. I know what not to do. But the tower itself is from Apotheosis. Interesting. Do you see those red things up there? They're actually apples. So if we harvest it... Okay. If we manage to harvest one, you see the amount of apples. They're amazing. Oh! Innocent children playing in the forest. Not yet. Later. Although it is turning into nighttime and it is going to be dark, that is not the real darkness. It's not full of important items. We have half a stack of diorite. We have some granite that we're never going to use. And we have almost 1000 cobblestone. But that is not the way to play the game. We need an upgrade. Uh, do I have some string? Okay, good. While I'm going to work on getting a new drive, maybe we should also make some grout. Only two? Oh yes, because we are out of sand. The sand is in here. We didn't have space. I think three stacks of grout is going to be sufficient to get started. So, I did make an extra 4k drive, we have a decent supply of grout, let us make a smeltery. Unfortunately, in this version of Tinkers, we first have to start with a heater. Then we need to make a seared melter, one faucet, and I think a casting basin. Cause here is the point, in order to make the smeltery controller itself, we need to drop a seared heater inside the casting basin and pour molten copper on it. Don't ask me why they decided to make such a change, uh, maybe they thought Tinkers is OP. It's not. Anyways, we should put the seared heater on the ground, the melter goes on top, we give the heater a little bit of solid fuel, and we should be able to melt down copper. We also need to attach a faucet to the melter and... Okay, our copper is ready. So you, my dear friend, you go in the basin, and here is your copper. Is it enough? Yes, it was. And here is our controller. Of course, there is one more thing that I want to do, and that is to try and get this book, Mighty Smelting. It's one ingot of seared bricks on book. So I need a casting table, okay. I do not understand the recipe, but it's fine. We have the book. Oh nice, this is going to give us explanation on tier 3 material. That is good. And this is what I was looking for. Previously copper was experienced, now electrum is. So if we mine blocks, we will gain experience. The book was totally worth it. The seared heater and the melter were not. They're garbage. Oh, and by the way, I was trying to cook a little bit more grout so that we would be able to make a decent sized smeltery. I have made all the parts that we need in order to make a functioning smeltery and let us assemble it over here. Let us also assume that nothing has changed. So we're going to make a base of 3x3. Here is the controller. There is a new item called seared shoot that is smeltery input and output. So I'm going to put it here. I have also made some seared glass that is for decorations, you know, so that we can see what kind of fluids are inside. I have also made three drains and we're going to put them on this side. The back we're just going to cover with bricks and the tanks we put them on this side. So if I place this block, the smeltery should be complete. Are you? 
No. Oh, you are. Okay. Oh, I'm missing one brick. Uh, we can make it. You go over there. Now that we know nothing is wrong with the smeltery itself, let us get some lava. There is a lava pool next to the jungle. Yeah, that is 8 buckets. Oh, and by the way, if you want to check if your smeltery is correct or not, this is an invalid version, and if I put the tanks, you might notice a change. This is valid. So again, I could be wrong, but I think in this version of Tinkers, we just need to make the part builder and the tinker station. And if we put them next to each other, we should also have all the patterns, right? No. Oh yes, you do not have a stencil table to make the patterns, you just put the patterns inside the part builder. So we're going to start with a pick, we're going to have an axe, and we're also going to have a sword. There is not a shovel, but there is a mattock. <laughs> then in that case, we're also going to make a mattock. And also on a very positive note, the smeltery still doubles your ores. Anyhow, we know how to make tools, what do we make them out of? Well, I have been doing a little bit of reading. The tier 1 material in the materials and you book is garbage. The tier 2 material is also not the best. The book that we just got, the mighty smelting, that is where everything gets interesting. We are going to make the bindings out of Electrum so that we will get more experience whenever we're mining or killing mobs. I think eventually we want to upgrade all the heads to Hepatizen, but the problem is for that we need Cobalt. And in order to mine Cobalt, I think we have to go with Steel. Or we can also go with a Diamond Pickaxe, but we're going to go with Steel, cause I'm cooking it. Hello, what do you have to sell? Oh, I like this, but it's expensive. So go to hell. Oh nice! I got some leather. Electrum can be made in a smeltery, right? Silver and gold. That is fine by me. I'm very happy. Do you know why? Because I don't have to make extra machines. So there is a recipe for making brass, but can we also use gold? Yes, okay, fine. Oh, the casts actually look nice. They have changed the textures. So if I have not messed up anything, this should be our pickaxe and it should have a mining level of diamonds. So does it mean I can mine cobalt or no? Well, I'm assuming there is only one way to find out. We go to the nether. And every time that we come here, we're basically losing 6 levels of experience. Nice. How am I supposed to find cobalt? There's grass everywhere. Can I vein mine? Okay, that is something. Dimensional shard. Not very useful. Okay, that should be cobalt. I think we have found it. Uh, can I mine you? Yes, it's cobalt and we can mine it. Perfect, it fell down. Let me try to find a little bit more cobalt and maybe a little bit of soul sand and then I'll be right back. I finally managed to find a proper piece of the nether where you can actually see the ores and I did move our waystone and then I noticed we have a tinker's island and I really want to know what the hell is that fluid. So what do we do? I have a bucket, we're going to empty it and we're going to check it out. It's called Blood Island. I like it. So I'm guessing your blood, right? Magma cream bucket. It's fine. We have everything we need. I just need one piece of soul sand. Because there is one more book that we can craft. And that is about the foundry. Which seems to be a new option in Tinkers. I think it was this one. So, nether grout. Like so. And here is the fantastic foundry book. Aha. Tier 4 material. Okay, I was correct about Hepatizen. That gets momentum, meaning the more blocks we mine, the faster we're going to mine. That used to be an attribute of cobalt, now it's for hepatizen. That's fine, because the other attribute of cobalt is lightweight, meaning that it's going to mine faster, and we're going to get it from the binding or, I don't know, the tool rod. So making the hepatizen alloy itself either requires blaze honey or blaze juice, uh, because apparently it needs a higher temperature than lava, and for the moment, we can't really do that. Therefore, all of that being said, our tools are made out of cobalt, electrum, as well as steel. That should give us the best attributes until we manage to get a blaze inside the smeltery. And talking about the smeltery, I like the idea that we had in all the mod 6 that we build as we go along. This way everything will look neat and clean. The problem with that strategy is that you're limited on blocks. Oh and by the way, I forgot to mention that the Tinker's Anvil is basically our tool forge, so we can make the hammer inside this guy. So now that we have proper tools, we need to upgrade them. In this version of Minecraft, we do not have the Tinker's leveling mod, so the more that we use our tools, it's not going to give us any more modifiers. We actually have to craft additional modifiers. And if you look at the material and me book, it will tell you how we can get additional modifiers. A music disc, which we don't have, mob head, which we don't have, and end crystal, which we don't have. Also a book and quill, but I don't have any feathers. So here is what we're going to do. We're going to modify them with diamonds. That will give us extra durability. You see durability is 880. Now it's almost 1400. Also I have just released a previous episode and I have been reading your guys' comments. Some of you were suggesting that I should do the quest and I should start claiming them. So I have actually started doing that and the rewards are crazy. One of those rewards gave me a lot of ores. So we have 21 lapis 
and 19 redstone. And I'm assuming the best way of processing them is with an enrichment chamber. That will give us 12. The problem is that we do not have that much redstone, so we need to get a little bit. Because I want to go mining and I really want to have fortune on my pick. I have just made two circuits and do we get any quests? No. But I will get one from the metallurgic infuser. Yes. Perfect. Uh, you're going to give me a steel casing and a loot box. Oh, that gave me energy upgrades and universal cables. Uh -huh. Okay, so here is the enrichment chamber and that should be another quest. Oh my goodness, that's great. Elite tier installer and dynamic tank. Uh, rewards are kind of broken. Can we get Sword of the Cosmos? It is a high possibility, I'm not going to lie. Are you going to give me 12? Please, 9. Okay, 9 is good. Except you cannot have fortune on your tinker's tools. Or even Silk Touch. So basically, Tinker is now garbage. Who cares? I want to do a little bit of mining and they will do. So let us also make a Dank. Well, we can easily afford Dank 1, which has a stack limit of 256. That's not very good. Oh, Dank 2 is blocks of redstone. So here is Dank 2. And Dank 3 is gold. Well, we have the ore and we can double it. So here is my 8 blocks of gold. And here is Dank 3. I don't think for a very long time I would be able to afford tank 4, so for the moment, this will do. We have decent tools, so let me do some mining, and I'll be right back. Oh, hammer is now a two-handed tool, so you cannot place down torches. Ladies and gentlemen, do not play with tinkers in 1.16. An atomic disassembler is going to do a far better job. I have done a fair amount of mining and we have a decent supply of resources. I was a little bit turned off by the new tinkers because we cannot fortune or silk touch anything. And that's really bad. If I have done a mistake and there is a way to fortune or silk touch items using tinkers construct, please let me know. Cause I did not find it in the books and you cannot apply lapis. But you might notice that we have a new garbage building and that is going to be our fisherman's hut. Of course I'm not going to fish manually because that's not really fun. We're going to make the fisher from industrial foregoing. Yes, it's called marine fisher and well, it should give us fish. And just to refresh your memory, the main reason that I started this mod pack is because we can make sushi and we have occultism. And I love them both. The hat looks ridiculous. Can we like hide you? Yes. Much better. Now you can focus on my beautiful eyes. Let us get down to business. Apparently in this mod pack there are two ways of getting plastic. One of them is through industrial foregoing, which is a process that I don't really like. The other one is from thermal expansion. So we can get dry rubber from a fractionating steel from latex. And we can get latex from vines in a multi-servo press. And that will bring up the question, how do we get extra vines? Well, phytogenic insulator. So we do have a fair bit of crafting involved and I have already made some of the alloys. And we should also make sure that each of the quests is going to count. So we're going to activate you. And thankfully our first quest is to make a redstone furnace. So here is a redstone furnace. That should be a quest. The next one is to make a pulverizer. We don't really need it, but we do it in order to finish the quest. So what do you give me? Machine frame, glass and rubber. Not bad. Actually, since the quest rewards are very OP, uh, let us follow the quest, because we need to make invar dust. I have already made the ingots inside the smeltery, but we need the dust. And you just need one dust, right? There you go. That gave me hardened glass. Wow. I'm not gonna lie, I really want food. I'll tell you what, this is going to take some time, so let me make all the machines, and then I'll be right back. If I have not messed up anything, this is going to be our setup for making plastic. We are going to have a phytogenic insulator that is going to make us vines. Then we are going to put the vines inside the multi-servo press that is going to give us latex. Latex goes inside the buffer tank. Then we are going to have a fractionating steel which is going to take the latex and is going to give us raw rubber. And then we cook it into plastic. I am going to set it up over here because eventually I want to make a retaining wall for the shoreline. So it's not going to remain floating, don't you worry. So the bin itself is going to be for storing some sort of a fertilizer which is going to be used by the phyto grow. We can set you to auto input and if I give you bone meal you should take it in. Good. Phytogenic insulator is also going to require water so we do have a sink. And from completing one of the quests I did manage to get a configurator. So we're good. So that is water, that is fertilizer and here are the vines. And I'm also going to give it an augment so that it will always put back one of the vines inside so that it will make more. That will go inside a multi-servo press. And since six of the machines are not going to be symmetrical, 
we need a pipe, which will go inside the tank, so this should be fine and symmetrical. Fractionating steel and redstone furnace. One thing that you might notice is that we also need to provide them with power. For the moment, I did make some solar panels, the basic version from power, and that should be more than enough. Cause I don't know, in the recent version, they're making 220 RF per tick. That's a lot. Really a lot. Although, it's not going to be really fast. We can also make some upgrade kits. This is not expensive. Very good, very good. We're getting latex. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our first piece of plastic. Which, ironically, is not a quest. Okay. So we do have our plastic, I also kept one bucket of latex, and we should be able to start making the marine fissure. The problem is that the marine fissure itself is going to require a simple machine frame, and we need a dissolution chamber, with latex. Oh, you need a diamond gear. What a jerk. Well, it is what it is. Here is my dissolution chamber, here is your bucket of latex, here is your power. I like the solar panels. They look nice. And if I have not messed it up, this should be the ingredients? Yes. Oh, you consume a lot. Is it night time? Oh, you consume 400. Okay, it's perfectly fine by me. We can have a buffer and then we can have the solar panel. That should be enough RF, right? We can activate you. Very good, we have it. I have made the resource fissure and we're going to set it up over there. Uh, the problem is that we don't really have a means of transportation. Later on, I'm going to make a bridge. Don't you worry. The question is, how do we want to do this? Well, I can remove you. Then put the energy cell over there and we can have the marine fissure over here above water. And the solar panel on top. You're supposed to be a fissure. Your first item cannot be string. Anyways, this is going to require a lot of filtering, so we're going to have a logistical sorter. And down here, we're going to have a little bit of dire wire. So, a trash can so that we can dump the junk. Of course, not everything is garbage, so we're going to mark you to blue. And the other one, which is going to go to our storage, we color it to green. And yes, this is a temporary storage, so don't worry. That is a lot of items. <laughs> okay, I was hoping for more fish, but it's okay. We also get a lot of junk. Of course, later on, I'm going to upgrade it, but for the moment, I'm fine with this speed. Now that we have our fish, there is one more thing that I want to do before finishing today's episode. And that basically is a mining turtle. Should I make the advanced one? Yeah, why not? It's cheap. Not that I'm going to program it, but you know, advanced is better. I did not have to do any of this if Tinkers had fortune, but now since there is no difference between me mining or a turtle, well, it's better that a turtle does it. There should be a program called Excavate, and we should give it a diameter. We give it 15? That should be enough. Oh, and you also need fuel. So dig. Very good. Thank you. So it will dig an area of 15 by 15 and it will go down to bedrock and it will deposit everything inside this chest. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye.